Hello and welcome to our next session. Today we are going to be looking at a real life example on how to implement a while loop. However, let's begin with a few basics. We are required to write a program that displays 1 all the way to 5. To achieve this, using a loop, we are going to initialize our count to 1. And then because we are terminating when we get to the number 5, in our while, we are going to say while count is less or equal to 5. And so long as this condition remains to be true, what we want to do, these particular two statements will continually be executed, we would want to display that value. So I have a small table here that explains what happens at each and every stage. This is the initialization, that is line 4. This is the condition which is supposed to be line 5. The display count is our line 7 and the increment is supposed to be our line 8. So in the first time we have assigned our count as a 1. And then we go to the while and ask ourselves, is a count less or equal to 5? So long as this is true, then we go ahead and execute the statement that are there. So our count is a 1. So it means that our 1 is less or equal to 5. It's true. So we're going to display a 1. And then we increment the count by adding 1 and that becomes 2. So as so long as our condition remains to be true, we are going to execute again. Now our count is now 2. So again we ask ourselves is 2 less, that, less or equal to 5 and the condition is true. So we display that particular count, which in this case is true. Then we add a 1, it becomes 3. So long as our condition remains to be true, we execute again. So in this given case, now our count is 3. We test the condition, 3 is less than. So again, uh, that condition is true. We display that 3. We increment by adding a 1, becomes 4. The condition is still true. So we execute again with our count being 4. We test 4, 4 is less than, so the condition is true. We display our 4, we add a 1, becomes a 5. The condition is still true, so we execute again with the, the count now being 5. We test 5 is equals to 5, that's true. We display our 5, we increment it becomes 6. So the condition is still true, so we now work with the 6, then we test is a count, which in this case is 6, less than f or equal to 5. It's false. And the program terminates at that, and this is the output that we normally get. In the event uh, for that particular program, as you have seen in that given case, when we execute it, we are going to have the values being executed um, horizontally. So the one is initialization. We can see we are incrementing. We are moving from 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 5. And 5 stops at that given point because it's at that given point where our count equals to 5. In the event we need to display our values, now not horizontally but vertically, the only small adjustment that we need to do is to introduce a backslash n immediately after displaying the first value and then they are going to be organized in a vertical manner. At times we may display in a reverse manner. Instead of displaying 1 to 5, we may now be required to display 5 to 1. So in that given case, our initialization will not be 1, but rather it's going to be 5. And then we are going to stop when the count is now greater or equal to 1. So in, when we have our count as 1, equal to 1, at that given point is where we are going to stop. Similarly, because we are moving from 5 to 1, we are not going to be adding a 1, but rather we are going to be subtracting a 1. You can use this and try to do a similar table as uh, what I've shown in uh, this particular case. Try to do a similar table for that. Then our last example is on doing a student mark example with the concept of uh, a loop. This is a program that's supposed to prompt a user to enter the remarks. Then it's supposed to get the total as well as the average. Minus a loop would have been forced to declare three variables. And each of those particular variables would have been uh, used to store the particular marks for each of the given students. But you're going to see when we are using a loop, we only need to declare one variable, which in this case is a mark. And it's going to sort our issue. 
So this program will have an initialization which you can see that we're initializing our account to one because we want to enter the marks for three particular students. Then we have a mark which is supposed to be capturing the mark for each and every student at each and every iteration. We have the total which we are assigning to zero because we want to add as we enter the marks, we want to add. As we enter the marks, we want to add. And then we have the average which we want to know the average of the three marks that have been entered. So the line six, we are going to have such an output. This program will ask you to enter your marks. And then you can see that we have put a condition that when we get to the third prompt of the marks, that's when the exam, sorry, the execution needs to stop at that given point to prompt you to uh, enter marks. So in this given case, we are going to re uh, request someone to enter the marks. And then we have a scan F here, which you are going to see them being prompted for the marks. For example, this person enters the marks maybe 50. And then this mark 50 is going to be added to the initialization value, which, which in this given case was a 0. Then 50 plus 0, the mark is going to be 50. Then we increment. Our count was 1. Now we increment by 1. It's going to be 2. So our count is now going to be having a value 2. Then we come back here and test. Is our 2 less or equal to 3, which is true. Then we prompt again the user to enter the mark. In this given case, now the user is going to enter a mark like 60. Then at this given point, remember, our total is now holding a 50. So it's now going to take that 60, add the 50. It's now going to be holding the 110. And then it's going to increment. Our count to header 2. Now we have added, uh, we are incrementing by a 1. So our count is now going to be a 3. So 3 is similarly equal to 3. So we are going to be prompted to enter another mark. We may enter maybe something like a mark like 10. Then at this given point, our total head 110. We add a 10, which in this given case is going to be 120. Then we increment 3 plus 1. It's going to be a 4. So when we now go back here and put a 4, 4 is not less than. So the program terminates that. So the count becomes 120. We come out of this particular loop. We proceed now with the execution. So we are going to take our 120 and we divide by 3 and that gives us a 40. And then we now execute this statement printf. The total marks is, so it's going to take 120, which is this particular total. And the average is going to be the average that has been gotten by these, which is 40. Now we are putting a dot 2 so that we are able to display the values uh, to two decimal places. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next session.